Now today I want to talk about uh, equations of lines in the coordinate plane and specifically about parallel and perpendicular lines in the coordinate plane. But before I do that, uh, I just want to give a quick review of, of just in general the equation of lines in the coordinate plane and, and how we can plot lines or, or if we have a line already plotted, how we can determine what the equation of that line has to be. So for starters, we have right here y equals mx plus b. That's the standard equation of a line. That's in slope-intercept form is what we call it. Because we have the letters m and b, which normally would be filled by, by numbers if we had an equation of a line. But in this case, uh, m is a number that's going to represent the slope. Anytime you see m, think slope. And b is going to be our y-intercept. Now what are those? The y-intercept, for starters, is just where our line crosses the y-axis, the vertical axis. So for example, if I had a line that, that crossed the y-axis right here, at four units above the origin, the y-intercept is just four. Okay? If it crosses at two points below the origin, then we know that the, uh, the, uh, the y-intercept is negative two. It's two below the origin. The slope, slope, we should probably define that right here. You've probably heard slope equals rise over run. Okay, and what that means, again, is, is if you have a line, and we should probably go ahead and draw a line in here, we can figure out what the slope is based on how many units it rises and how many units it goes uh, to the right. So, for example, if that's a line in the coordinate plane, It crosses the y-axis at three units above the origin, so the slope, or sorry, the y-intercept is going to be three in this case. The slope we can figure out if we just take another point on the line, so say that point right there, and that looks like it's at one, two, three, four, five units up. One of it's going to be at the point one five. Okay, and we agreed that we cross the y-axis at zero three. And using those two points, we can figure out what our slope is, because we can figure out, to get from point A here to point B, how much we rise, how much we go up, in other words, and how much we run, how much we go over. Okay, so if we just count units in this case, it's pretty easy. The rise is 1, 2, and our run is just 1, 1 over. So in this case, we had 2 over 1, that's our slope, or just plain 2. Okay, so using that information, we now know what m is, our slope, and we know what b is, it's going to be 3, right, our y-intercept. We can write the equation of this line really quite easily. y equals our slope again, which was 2 times x plus b. In this case, b was 3. 3 units above the origin is where it crossed. Okay, now... That's the equation of, of that line there. There's another way that we can determine what slope is, and that's to use the equation y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is basically the exact same thing as what we did up here, except if we have two units, or sorry, two coordinates, instead of counting units, we can just plug in those coordinates to this equation, okay, where one point we would say is x1, y1, and the other is x2, y2, okay, and so we're going to take our two y coordinates and subtract, we'll do y2 minus y1, so that's going to be 5 minus 3. That tells us how much we rise, right? What the change in the y coordinates is. Okay, that's our rise, 5 minus 3. And then our run is going to be what's on the bottom of this fraction here x2 minus x1, which is x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0. That's 1 minus 0. So, again, that's how much we go forward in the x direction. Okay, so we have. 
5 minus 3, that's 2, over 1 minus 0, which is just 1. And again, that's the exact same result we got from counting units. The reason we would use this and not this is that sometimes if you get uh, two points on a line, for example, you're given two points that are far apart from one another, it may not be practical to count units. Or if we had points where uh, there were decimals involved, like this weren't 1, 5, maybe it's 1.327,5.789. Okay, it's difficult to count units when you're dealing with such small increments. Okay, and that's when you use something like this. Okay, so that's a quick overview of uh, slope intercept form. The last thing I'll talk about is, is if I give you the equation of a line, for example, let's do if I give you y equals negative 3x plus 7, how would you graph that? And that's really quite simple. Okay, you first identify what your slope is. Slope, again, is any, whatever comes before x. In this case, m, our slope, equals negative 3. And our y-intercept is going to be 7. y-intercept equals 7. That's where it's going to cross the y-axis. So, for example, and I'll do this in a different code up here since it's getting pretty busy. I know my y-intercept is 7, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's where I'm going to cross the y-axis. I can put a point there. And then my slope is negative 3 in this case. So I know that, oh, I'm dealing with a negative number. It's a little bit trickier now. But if our slope is negative 3, I know that my rise is negative 3. My run is 1. Okay, that's the same as, same as negative 3 over 1. Okay, so that means I'll go down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Down 1, 2, 3, and over 1. Okay, and I can keep going, but really I only need two points to define that line. So I can plot that real easily now just by drawing a line through those points. And that's going to be the equation of the line for y equals negative 3x plus 7. Okay, I know my, my diagram is getting really busy now, so I'll stop there. And we'll pick up with our next lesson talking about parallel and perpendicular lines uh, in the coordinate plane. As a quick addendum to that last lesson about uh, equations of lines in, in, the, in the coordinate plane, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about, just very generally, slopes in the coordinate plane. And uh, mostly where you'll have positive slopes, negative slopes, slopes that equal zero, and then one other specific case. So let me just draw uh, a few things up here. We know that if we have a positive slope, that means that the line will be going, uh, as, as we go from left to right, the line will be rising. It has to be going upward. It can be going upward a little bit, upward a lot, but if it's somewhere between just above horizontal and not quite to vertical, going upward from left to right, we know that line has to be positive. So for example, if I have this line, I know my slope is going to be positive. Okay, I know that because if I take any two points on that line and I look at the rise and the run, the rise will be positive, the run will be positive. We're going up, we're going positive over, so the line has to have a positive slope. Now, we can also have negative slopes. That's going to be when the line is going downward as we go from left to right, for example. My red line here will have a negative slope. And we know that because as we go from, from one point to another on this line, well, our rise will be negative and our run will be positive. So that'll be a fraction of rise over run will be a negative number over a positive number. So our slope has to be negative. Okay, two other cases. I'll do this in orange. One is if we have a horizontal line. Okay, a horizontal line. Let's see what that slope will have to be. If I pick any two points, say I pick this point and this point, to look at my rise and my run. Well, my rise is zero, right? So it'll be zero 
over whatever my run is. In this case, it could be two units, could be four units, it really doesn't matter because zero divided by any number is always zero. Okay, my rise is zero, my run is going to be some positive number, so my slope has to equal zero. For any horizontal line, any horizontal line slope has to equal zero, no matter where it is. If it's down here, up here, slope has to be zero if that line is horizontal. The last one in green here is if we have a vertical line. Okay. Now, let's investigate that. If I take two points, it doesn't matter where they are. My rise could be, it's going to be some positive number. I'm going, as I go from this point to that point, I'm going, call it three units up, some positive number. My run, though, is going to be zero. Let me write this M. It's going to be rise over run. Rise, we decided, let's call it three. My run is zero. I don't go anywhere in the x direction. Okay, now, three divided by zero. You might be tempted to say that's zero, but type it into your calculator if, if, if you want to check for sure. It'll give you a message that, that, that says something like error or undefined. And that's because you cannot divide a number by zero. If you have a fraction with zero on the denominator, you know it's undefined. Okay, so a vertical line will always have a slope that's undefined. All right, quick review. A line that goes upward from left to right is positive. It goes downward from left to right, it's negative. If it's horizontal, the slope is zero. And if it's vertical, the slope has to be undefined.